Welcome to a, another edition of Grown Ass Women TV. Oh, yes, my friends, that's a hashtag. Gaw TV, please use that hashtag. Well done, Mickey. That <laughs> Gaw TV, you're so hip. That Gaw TV hashtag when you want to join the discussion on social media. If you're here for the first time, please do us a favor and like this video. Make sure that you subscribe. And of course, click that bell icon to enable notifications so you never miss a future episode. We have so much in store for 2021. Mickey, Lisa, we have had a great year so far, but there's more to come, right? Oh, so oh. much more. We're just starting to scratch the surface. It's crazy. Honestly. Honestly. Honestly, all right. Scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. <laughs> I was like, oh, get that spot. No, it's been an amazing year so far. I think we've made so many like memories. We've had some in incredible guests on so far. And it's just crazy to know that we're still just in the baby steps of the year in 2021. And here we are. I know. I know. What? In some ways it's going by really fast, but then we're like, oh my God, we've not even been doing this a year, which by the way, in May, it'll be our, is gaw anniversary a thing? Should we make it a thing? Gaw anniversary. It's a thing now. <laughs> now it is. Show now. Is it really a year? It'll be a year in May. So I know we're not there yet, but it's, yeah, it's, it's in a weird way. It's flown by in some ways it's gone by, you know, slowly the year because of lockdown, especially here in the UK. But yeah, in, in May, it'll actually be a year of God TV. I know we're, we're not there yet, but that's, how did this happen? What happened? What happened? Oh, it's know. amazing. Well, if you love the show here on YouTube, which we so appreciate all of you, especially those in the chat room, we are so grateful to all of you guys. If you're watching down here, replay, hey guys in the chat room, guys and gals. Hey, shitty chat, chit chat. Shitty chat, <laughs> chat, chat. Oh yeah. We love the chat room. If you guys are watching on replay, which we do realize that a lot of you are, please remember that every single Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, that's 10 p.m. for those of us in the UK, we are in the live chat room on YouTube watching in real time with you. So we want to make sure that, that you uh, had that experience to chat with us live while the show goes on. We love that part of it. But also we want to let you know that we are not only available on YouTube. Oh no, we up the ante. We are a part of a podcast now. We're calling it the hashtag GawCast, available on anchor.fm slash GawTV. And you can find us on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can hear us. You can hear these shows in their entirety in podcast form. Say what? What? <laughs> What you say? What are you talking about? What we're, you expanding, talk about we're expanding. We're expanding. Hit the fire alarm. Wait, listen. Oh. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Damn. Hot. Hot. Hello. Hot. Hot show. Hot, hot show. Come in hot. Come in hot. It is indeed. I love it. And you know what, you guys? This show is called Grown Ass Women. By the way, quick plug to my little pillow here. It's part of our Ooh. spring store. Our merchandise is linked in our YouTube description, as is everything we talk about on the show. So make sure that you look at the YouTube descriptions. You can find this God TV pillow designed by our gorgeous Ella Jackson. Lots of designs by our, our wonderful uh, Ian Goodwin as well. Our merchandise is hot, hot, hot. You're going to want it. You want to represent God. That's the place to do it. But speaking of hot, <laughs> he's like, hot potato. Woohoo! <laughs> Careful. Careful. Whoa. Mickey, we've got a hot guest that's actually a friend of yours, and we love when you introduce us to not only a new friend, but someone that is a true grown-ass woman. You know, thanks. But I tell you what, this girl, this woman, grown-ass woman, Allie, I went on recently and did her podcast. She has her own podcast, but she is a grown-ass woman. She is a mother. She is a wife. She is a celebrity fashion stylist. She's an entrepreneur. She's an influencer. She's a philanthropist. She's like supports all these. You know how I found her was through Operation Underground Railroad. We were doing that giveaway. Remember the giveaway we did here who Alan Lumbarger, am I saying his last name right? I think Alan it's Landau. Landau. Alan Landau. He's in the chat. Landau. Hi, Alan. Landau, you are in the chat. He knows I butcher his last name. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Alan, we love you. He won our giveaway for Operation Underground Railroad, but that is where she and I kind of met through Instagram, which is really weird, um, but not weird because it's like, it's crazy because during all of this, that's kind of how you're kind of reconnecting with people. But she and I just immediately connected and got on like a house of cards because her energy is in the right place. Her heart's in the right place. And she's just, you know, 
just an awesome, awesome, amazing well, woman. And so I, after having that conversation with her, I've gone on her podcast. That's coming out this week too. We're going to co-align everything. So you can go listen to that. Yay. But also I was like, you have to come on the show so we can talk about how incredible you are and amazing things you do. Plus fashion bow. And I, I know. thought- you guys I might purposely be dressed up a little more than you because I was like, she's a celebrity stylist. She knows some of the housewives. Don't you, don't you dare think I'm not going to ask her about the housewives. She oh. is fabulous. I fell in love with her Instagram the second that you sent it to me, Mickey. So we're so happy to have Allie Levine here. Ladies and gentlemen, our special gal of the week, Allie Levine. Welcome to the show. Oh. Well, Mickey yeah. just gave you a stellar introduction, but for the fans that are watching on Gaw TV, Grown Ass Women TV, we were saying we're so happy to meet a fellow Grown Ass Woman. Can you give us a little background about you, uh, just as an introduction to some of our fans here that don't know you yet? Oh, sure. Well, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I love your show and everything you guys are doing, uh, oh. so I'm honored. <laughs> no. uh, but yeah. So I'm Allie. Uh, I am originally from New York. I moved out to Los Angeles over 10 and a half years ago now. So weird to say that. Um, and <laughs> I, uh, yeah, now a mom of two. Um, for those that know me, I, you know, have been in the celebrity styling world for quite some time, working with a lot of different, you know, big names. And that's kind of where I got my start. And then once I transitioned from stylist to TV personality, started doing national and local TV segments, sharing the hottest trends and, you know, tips on what you should wear, what my celebs were wearing, getting best dress, how to put those looks together, chic for less, all that fun stuff that I love to do. And then I was on a crazy show on Bravo that most know they're called Stripped <laughs> with my husband. And that kind of like set the, the limelight personality of me, I guess, more in to the world, if you will. Uh, and then after people watched our journey, you know, I got pregnant with my daughter, Amelia, we revealed that at the end of the show, uh, my, you know, my firstborn, and people started watching my pregnancy journey. And before I knew it, I was sharing my life with everyone. <laughs> oh um, and that's kind of like where, you know, I wound up now being a mommy, you know, influencer in the world and the content creation I do around my family and everything. And so yeah, now I'm a mom of two. Uh, sharing it all real and raw. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Much. I oh do. Gosh, and it's so crazy. funny. I keep looking at your little teepee in the back and I have, I know. Same, I know. I have the same teepee, <laughs> but it's all in white. And I've been thinking about painting it because it's gotten like, it's older now. Cause I got it when Donovan was probably about your, probably about Amelia's age. I got it when he was about a year and a half, two years old. Um, who gave it to me? Karen Jarrett gave it to me. Is oh, who Karen me. Jarrett all white TP and I'm like, Ooh, I should paint the sides and like native American kind of different things. But like, <laughs> I don't That's know. Fun, right. My, my cousin and my aunt actually tie dyed the entire thing for her because she's like tie dyed obsessed. So they oh, she did is. her. And yeah. She loves like all the colors, all the, you know, all the rainbows. All the in there. Stuff. Donovan loves his, it's like a little tuck away, like a little hideaway, like his own like, little totally. basement, Well, that's like, what it is in my place. office. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm, I, when I work in here, she sits in there and she plays and she reads and he, she does her thing. So it's yeah. so funny when I was getting on with you guys, she's like, oh, I come in, I sit in the TP, And I'm like, no, we have to be really quiet. So mama needs office to herself. <laughs> she's so used to like, being a part of everything because she yeah. wants to sit in her TV and like listen. Uh, She's <laughs> I love that. Now we've been a part of your Instagram stories and I've, I've been lightly stalking you on Instagram and it's so cool <laughs> that you're kind of sharing all your journeys. You even have like an Amazon list to help like new moms and stuff. I find that really cool because I follow a lot of bloggers that you know, initially I followed them because they were fashion and they were accessories and things like that. And then some of them evolve into different things. You know, some of them evolve into, um, you know, advocacies and, and charities. Some of them evolve and they become moms. Uh, Kiara Ferrani, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, one of the biggest fashion influencers ever. Yeah. When she yeah. became a mom, I'm not a mom yet, but it was so great to follow her journey. So how has it been to share those personal moments? Yeah. That's, that's a big thing to share. Really personal. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I love this question. It's definitely, you know, it, it, it's had its moments, right? It's like, it's been intense. It's been, it's been really fun to get to connect with amazing women who really are supportive about it and are like all for it. And of course, as you guys know, there's always trolls. There's always 
stuff online that you know you don't really want to be inundated with but you are um and so of course i've had people who are like you know why are you breastfeeding on your stories or you know why are you sharing this or why are you sharing that i mean listen even like some of my own family and friends are like it doesn't make me comfortable and i'm like look it's not for you like it's not to be it's not to be rude it's not to upset you it's not to make you feel uncomfortable if you don't want to watch by all means like please don't watch like don't, don't feel like just because you know me personally like you have to be a part of everything this isn't for you this is for my brand my career everything I'm doing I didn't ask to be here but here I am you know um and I'm very and I'm very grateful for it but I do believe you know God and everything put it on my heart to share and I continue to get those feelings of messages of like you know share this about this journey and you know talk about this and you know I don't sit there and think oh what can I write that's really raw and vulnerable it just comes right and it's like a it's kind of like a long blog I feel like on Instagram you know I do blog but not as much as I used to I need to get better about it but I pour so much onto my social that I feel like I don't have anything left to then get on my site and blog you know it's like people don't realize you know yes it is my job and yes of course I work with all these amazing brands and sponsors but at the same time it's still me and it's my life you know whereas before it was my celebrities the people I was styling and it was just talking about the facts of what they were wearing and you know what I could talk to and that was amazing but this is a whole nother level of like rawness and vulnerability and sharing who I am and you know, it gets intense. I'm not going to lie. There's days where I, I can't show up for a day or two and people will say like, oh, you weren't on your stories. And I'm like, yeah, I just didn't have the energy to be there. Yeah. And I think that's okay. It, right. Like, I feel totally. like it's we're very, human. Like, we have, we have a yeah. family too, to, to, to yes. like pay attention to. They don't realize like going social media, it's almost like a, it's a job. And sometimes right. you just need a, a, a break from it and just going, okay, I, I haven't been there for my loved ones. That's Maybe right. I should take a little break, you know, that yeah. it's not, you know, it's not, it can't be 24 seven. Right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. And it's like, you know, sometimes it can be extremely consuming, especially if I have to be on, you know, for a campaign, you know, then I have to, of course, be on to speak on that and talk about that brand and make sure it's all around that. And then I'm sure like you guys, you get so many different messages and all different things going on and you want to get back to everyone. But sometimes like there's days where it takes me like four days to get back to like all my DMs. And I've had to like tell myself like, that's okay. Because I'm, like you guys just said, like real life, there are things going on that I have to deal with instead. And I will get back to that. And I feel like if something's really, really important, then they will reach out to me some other way, which I've gotten before. Like I'll get in the email and they'll be like, Hey, I listened to this episode on your podcast and you know, you didn't respond on your social media. So I thought I'd send you an email and I'm like, Oh, okay. Well they clearly are trying to get my attention <laughs> somewhere else. So I'll try to respond faster, but yeah, you know, it's, it's been kind of a roller coaster to be honest social media you know it's like I think for anyone that is heavily involved with social they feel the same it's not the easiest to always show up um you know a lot of days I'm super raw and I'm just like in my pajamas and no makeup and you know not put together and some days I can get on and just like show that I'm raw and it's like it is what it is today and then there's some days where like I can't really show up for myself emotionally so I can't show up for others to be there to say like hey look at me I'm a hot mess you know and I think that's okay you know I think we put this a crown on social media that like makes it seem like everything has to not only be perfect but like you have to share everything in the moment and you have to share like what's going on right then it's like well that's not true because before social media we all just sh- shared within you know our friends ourselves our family sometimes maybe not even just to ourselves so I think that you have to kind of remove that pressure I know I have had to and decide yeah what I'm going to share and what I'm not, you know, not going to take in the things people are going to say that are, you know, negative or hurtful or whatever right. it may be. And just embrace the people that have said to me, like, thank you for sharing this because I don't feel alone. Or, you know, thank you for talking about postpartum depression because I didn't even know I had it or whatever it may be. Right. You yeah. know, it's like, if you're helping others, then I feel like no matter what, then you're of service. And then, you know, you're doing right by them and also, you know, right by yourself. And if, as soon as it becomes kind of this place, Mickey, you and I talked about this on my podcast, this place of ego, it totally switches and it just becomes a a place that like you don't want to be there nobody else wants to be there and it's just it's just not good so I try to really operate from that space of like what am I sharing why am I sharing it and you know if I feel like it great and if I don't I don't and if someone else doesn't like what I shared then that's fine it's not for them they can hit the unfollow button I've said that to people that have reached out to me and said you know hey I didn't like what you shared I will write them back and say hey by all means hit the unfollow Unfollow button exactly Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. it's there for it's there for a reason, right? And it's like the thing is, is it's it's funny. People I think feel bad about it, but it's like please don't because that your that's your health, that's your wellness, that's your you know overall being. If you don't feel good by something that's being shared or being said to you, like I will hit the unfollow button so quick. So like, don't feel like you can. Yeah, that's right. Take really your power good. back. And like right. you said, it was it was very well said, Ali, when you mentioned pressure. Like you don't have to give into those pressures, Mickey. I have to ask you because you being a mom, especially you probably have to find a, a very distinct balance between what you're sharing, what you're not. Are you oversharing? Are you not sharing enough? Because I know a lot of fans want to see, baby, we call him Baby D. He's not a baby by any means. <laughs> I know. want to cry. He's always a Baby D to us. And we, he'll, he'll come in here and do cameos and things. But how do you it. that sort of balance of showing him and not? Well, that's what I want to say. I want to applaud you on your bravery, I think, because there's times you go on there, no makeup, no filter, just you and your girls. And it's just, it's incredible to see. And I think because you say there's an immense amount of pressure as a woman, because we always feel like we have to hold ourselves to a different standards. Oh, I don't have my makeup on. I don't have this. I don't have that. Like, oh, because of judgment or what other people, you want to know what my favorite button is? the block button block. Okay. <laughs> I won't even put things over delete block mute all of them I don't Never even know that it's happening they don't they have no idea they don't even see it coming they like <laughs> But good yeah. for you because you would do that in real life, right? Like if someone I, came into yes. your space and said something you didn't like, you you would probably walk away or you would just say, I have to say to you. So it's like, why on social do we put this pressure of like, you know, it has to be a certain way. It's it's yeah. still, I, it's not real life, but it is real life. It's like, it's still our lives. So you have to yeah. kind of decide. I love that you do that. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like, like we, go ahead. I was like, I was saying, I think that it has an amazing pressure to a lot of people's mental health and what I've really yeah. have, like come to understand on people because, you know, you're sitting there and it's, it's ironic because you'll put up a post and you'll see a thousand comments that are doing nothing but praising you, telling you how amazing you are, how empowering you are, how awesome it is that you're doing this, that, and the third. And it's like, it makes you feel good, feel good, feel good. And it'll be that one person. Oh that one, guy, yep, that one. one person yep. and for whatever reason he, I will still see him an hour later that's why I go in and delete him because I go like why do I even let that in my world I wouldn't let yep. that in my own personal space like you just said I wouldn't let it in my yep. own personal space they wouldn't be in the circle in real life so why right. do I even let them Twitter has the button where it, you can personally filter your what you want to yes. see yes. you know what yes. I like my rose colored glasses because that's how I <laughs> see the world so yeah, I'm there's nothing wrong with that. That's your world. You know, it's like, it's not like you're pretending like that's, that's your space. That's your world. We all create our own spaces, our own sure. energy, what we allow, what we don't allow. So it's like, same thing with social media. I don't think people realize like how consuming social oh. can be sometimes. I have had so many moments where I'm like, I cannot deal. Like I can just not, like I, I am not getting on. I'm not looking at anything going on. And I've had people, you know, I like get my agency reach out to me like, Hey, you haven't been on like 72 hours. It's going on everything. Okay. And I'm like, yes, I needed a, like a health day. I needed like a yeah. few days, like decompress and just yeah. not be there. And like, you if would, something- You need an alley day. day. It's an alley right. day. An alley day. day. Lisa, yes. a lot. And Lisa's just coming off of um, the Royal Rumble, which was a huge return for her. Bravo, Lisa, WWE oh, return, much anticipated, it. much Thanks. deserved. But Lisa was saying, Ooh, like, like you said, Allie, like she needs to have some, <laughs> some Lisa time, I, as she says, and she needs to check the F out yeah. and that's okay. Lisa. Yes. It, uh, it took me like, um, uh, you know, we, I performed Sunday and I haven't been back in the WWE ring since 2009. And I wow. didn't post. For four so days, cool. four, I thank you for four days later. I needed, I just needed to be by myself. And yeah. when I, you know, my DMS, you know, you get really overwhelmed with the DMS. I, I'll read them and then I'll get, I'll just, okay. Uh, I'll just, I'll just read them, just not respond because it's just too much to keep up with. And they're like, what's yeah. it, what does it take to get at least a wave back? And I'm like, are you kidding me? If I spent responding to 400 DMs a day, I don't yeah. have time for my loved ones, my family, no my dad, life. Yeah. No, my life. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm reading them. And I just had it. I had to go. I yeah. can't do it. Like, and people are like, why are you not posting about the Royal rumble? You were just in the Royal rumble. And I was like, I'm, I was Take still in bed for You're two days. I didn't wash my hair yesterday. I washed my um, flight makeup off yesterday and I flew back home Monday. 
I could, I could, we don't I get shown that as a beauty treatment. We always say, take your makeup off before bed, but Lisa's allowed, okay? This is a big deal. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do it. I was just like, I crawl in bed and I just like, let me watch my Netflix. Let me cuddle with my dogs and just not talk. I just- I That just, was your happy place. You wanted to just be zen. I totally zen. get that. I do totally. that too. Like, and I think that it's like, again, it's like, it's, it's totally okay to do that. I don't know why, like, we as a society allowed social media to like come in because we all gave it power. We all did it. I mean, myself included. And it's like, we all gave it this power to be like, oh, you know, you have to show up and you have to say this and you have to respond. And it's like, but that's not what we do in real life. If someone texts you, like, you don't, maybe you do, but I don't like, if I get text messages, like I don't jump to answer unless I actually like have that moment and that space to respond right then. I see it's there and I know I need to answer, but like, usually I'm with the girls or I'm doing something. So it's like, that comes next, you know? And yeah. it's funny though, I think about like the boundaries we're talking about right now, right? Like I call them sacred boundaries they're like so important and it's like you know I'm thinking back to when I was styling all the time and I didn't have my girls and it was just Justin and I my husband and you know I was very much a workaholic and I was answering every text message didn't matter coming at three in the morning from a client you know I need to check on this dress oh yeah and I would answer and I think about that now and I laugh and I'm like wow I gave my power away I let them dictate whatever whenever they needed didn't matter so much so that when I pulled it back when I became pregnant and when I had my girls it was like a full-blown fight of like what's happening why aren't you responding is everything okay and it's like yes everything's okay I've got real shit going on <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you know and and I realized though that it was like me that set that up so same with social media right it's like if you allow that and you don't create those boundaries then you're telling everyone that they can do that and they can inundate and they're gonna push and push and push uh, just like they did with you to see like what what is the line and you have to draw it whatever it may be Ali hit the nail on the head that it's it's a part of your mental health to be able to say no and to not give someone that power. But go ahead, Lisa. Um, there's a, a show on Netflix called Social Dilemma. Did you watch it? I oh, didn't. I, I, I cut my Netflix off a while back, but but I've heard from tons of people that it's like very much all about this. It's very empowering. And I turn my ringer off, my notifications off at 5.30. Good for you. I don't wow. know. Nope. I'll, I'll check it. To see, my, dad, <laughs> my dad's in my eighties. My dad's in my eighties in, in his eighties. So I'm a little worried about my family, sure. but I sure. don't check social media. Right. I'm just like, wow. I go, there's, Good for just, you. it took a long time though, because I really like my least. I'm one person that needs the Lisa time because we just had an energy healer Ooh, yesterday on our it. show. Oh, and Melinda, you would oh, love her. Allie. Melinda, oh my God, she sounds like amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. She's Melinda is amazing. I just, I needed it. And I was like, I just need you, Lisa, for knowing when to switch on and to switch off, because we all said this on Voxer. I swear we're not sponsored by Voxer, but we probably should be. We Vox all the time. we got to get you in there. <laughs> um, but we were saying like, we, we're all better girlfriends, wives, friends, people, presenters, whatever the hell we are, we're better versions of ourselves when we know when to switch off, whether it's meditation or just Absolutely. Off, whatever it is. Yeah. You show up better. Right. And, and also right. too, like I've learned as a new mom and I was telling this to Mickey, like on my show, you know, it's like when you don't do that, you realize you're off in all areas of your life. Like all of a sudden you'll have like a check-in with yourself and you're like, why am I so stressed why is nothing getting done why is everything feel so overwhelming it's like things could still feel overwhelming but in my mind it's like there's a different way of it feeling like mentally you know like in in you and the energy and everything and it's like oh my gosh why is everything consuming me why am I like losing it right now and then I look yeah. at I'm like oh I didn't meditate the last few days oh I didn't do give myself space oh I just been on social media all day like you start to look at your, you know, patterns and what you're doing and you're like, oh, okay. You're now kind of giving, understand. You're, you're just, giving your soul away a little bit. Yeah. You're just like going, That's you know, right. you're oh giving, my God, giving, I just got chills. Giving, yes. giving, giving, giving. And you're like, wow, why am I feeling so empty about myself? Because you're giving just so much. You don't want to disappoint anybody. And you're That's just right. like lacking. Hey, you know, I, I, I deserve it too. Yeah. I, I, I need time. a break. Right. I need a break. Or Allie time or Mickey time or Val time. But you talk about this a lot on your podcast. By the way, guys, if you are not already following Allie, what the hell are you doing? Her description. <laughs> Hello. Description right now. I mean, get over there and follow at Allie <laughs> Levine Design uh, on Instagram, AllieLevine.com. Um, yeah. And of course, your podcast is called Everything with Allie Levine. And you talk about this a lot on your podcast. But how did you sort of transition from influencing and celebrity styling into uh, podcasting? 
So, you know, like anything else, like I was saying, when I was sharing, you know, kind of my real raw life, when I was going through my postpartum depression, and it was very heavy and real for me, you know, I started writing about it, I started sharing it on social. But I felt like kind of what we were saying with the energy, like I felt like it was out there, but I wasn't fully feeling like I was releasing it. And that was one of the things in my therapy that came up was like, however, you need to release it, you need to release it, even if it doesn't maybe feel the most comfortable, it actually shouldn't feel comfortable, like if you're actually releasing it. And so I tried to figure out like, okay, I'm writing these blogs and I'm writing it on my social and I'm writing it in my journal and I'm, you know, speaking it out loud. And then I realized, I think I'm just going to record myself talking about this just to like get it out there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't plan on having a podcast. I kind of just planned on like recording it, maybe putting it out just as like a single recording, whatever. I really didn't have a thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I decided I gave it to a few friends. My husband listened to it and they were like, you know, this is really good. And like, it's heavy, but it's really honest and it's really real. And you should, you know, you should share it if you feel called to. So a couple of friends that are podcasters were like, you should use that as your first like episode. And so then I was like, all right, well, whatever. Like, I don't really plan on having a podcast, but like, I'll, I'll just create this and see what happens, you know? And so I created, it was originally called stripped down, um, playing off the fact that you're, you know, kind of stripped down to that vulnerable self of you. For those that do know me and follow me, they know I was on the crazy show on Bravo called strip. So I kind of like played off the you know words. Um, and it was just about, you know, cause even on that show, you're stripped down to, you know, who you are at a very vulnerable level and taking everything away from you. And like, how do you handle it? So to me, it was like, you know, that was why I named it that to start. And then I just started sharing, you know, my heaviness of postpartum depression and motherhood. And I never expected so many people to reach out and say like, not only, you know, were they there for me and they were so sorry, but it was more of like this cathartic healing because others were reaching out and were like, I went through that too. And then I felt that way also, or I'm going through that now. And thank you for sharing it. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm sharing my own story and it's helping me selfishly, but it's also helping others. And I started really feeling that like true healing around it. And then, it, you know, that the podcast kind of took off and I started getting all these amazing guests and people coming on to support it. And before I knew it, it was no longer just motherhood. And I really wanted people to feel like it wasn't just moms that could share their stories. I wanted you to be able to be vulnerable no matter who you were and just share, you know, your heart, your soul, everything it may be. And that's when this last year I rebranded, you know, in the pandemic to everything with Allie Levine. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, the bravery and talking about postpartum depression, because I think it's one of those things that as a woman and as a mother, that you feel like you almost feel like, oh, I'm not supposed to feel this way because I just had the greatest moment of my life. I just gave birth to this. I've worked, you know, nine months, almost 10 months of this anticipation yeah. for this moment. But because of our, like the way, uh, you know, our um, um, balances change and our hormones yeah, change so drastically, a lot of women suffer from this and they suffer from it in silence because they're afraid to admit that they're depressed when they have this beautiful blessing in front of them that they've been waiting for this whole time. And they can't understand why they can't just love and be happy in this moment because they have yeah, all this you feel like shamed and you feel wrong and you're like and for me you know I especially felt weird because I was obsessed with Amelia you know I was like you know when she was born it was like oh my god like I'm obsessed with her I'm consumed by her so much so that like when she would take a nap I would go sit in the corner and cry and like like but put my knees up to my chest and just sob and it was like I couldn't handle being Allie like without her so it was like for me I didn't even feel like it was postpartum depression because everything like people had told me and I had read it was like what you just described like you know like you you know you maybe don't necessarily feel like you love your baby or you love them you know what you're doing and for me it was like oh I love my baby I love motherhood as far as she's concerned but I don't love any other part of me I can't love my body I can't look at myself in the mirror I don't even know who that woman is and it was just like destructive like I would just say the most awful things to myself and you know I didn't realize that like I just I just wasn't happy as me, you know, it was like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I guess, accept in the beginning that I like was this new mom and my life was changing and that like, I was no longer going to be the woman I was before. And I really do believe that our body changed and your yes. thought process changed. And it's like, you know, I think too, everybody right. thinks, oh, once I have a baby, my body's just going to bounce back to bounce what back. it was. Yep. Yep. Those are my podcast episodes. F the bounce back is what it's called. Because <laughs> the first thing I did, because I was like, F this, this is a lie. Again, in social media I was following so many moms that were posting you know their beautiful bodies you know seven days after having a baby it's like great no shade good for you like that's amazing but like 
not every woman has that and goes through that. And it was like, for me, I, I would just stare at these women and even women I knew at events. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Like, why is my body like nowhere? I, have a question, though. I do have a question on that, but because um, all these people in LA, you just moved to LA and also you yeah. came from New York. A yeah. lot of these people have chefs. They have a little bit more um, wealth in their, you know, like wow. they don't have someone that cooks healthy for them all the time. And so they don't have a trainer. They don't have people surrounding. Yeah. Like, like we're just normal people going, oh my God, this COVID, I just gained 20 pounds. How the hell am I going to get this off? I don't have a <laughs> And there are those I mean? I'm like, like I'm we- not working. I'm not having an income. Like yeah. I can't get a trainer. I can't, you know, like right. I don't get the prep meals delivered yeah. to my door, right. you know? Right. So it's, yeah. that's part of it too. Going, wow, how did they bounce back? But really they had the means had to bounce, mean. bounce back. Right. Well, and I love that you brought that up too, because I think again, like with the, you know, kind of illusion and and the non-reality for me of working with so many different celebrities and being around that without like realizing it, I consume that. And so I kind of assumed like, you know, I was in that, even though I wasn't in that, if that makes sense. And so it was like, oh, well then I'll just, I'll just, you know, bounce like them. And like, I, it's yeah. really cool. and you take on that reality, anything that you consume, I think you eventually take on as your reality, whether, you know, it's true or not true. So I think I did that right. when you, you know, right. and when she was saying that it really spoke to me. Cause I'm like, yeah, I did that. And I looked at that and I was like, oh, well, of course my body will just do what it's supposed to do. And it's not going to stay like that. And it was like, no, it took me almost a year to Same. get back, not just to my weight, but like I had a, you know, traumatic C-section. So it was like, my body like really didn't fully, I mean, I still have diastasis recti. I'm still working on it. Even though I had a V-back, which is a vaginal birth after a C-section for those that don't know with Arlie, you know, my body, it's a little bit more healed in that sense, but I still have the diastasis recti from Amelia and I'm still working through it. I actually spoke with a program yesterday. Who's going to help me like do actual exercises, like just for that, to help try to, you know, bring my muscles essentially back together. Cause it's like, they literally, you know, cut into cut your muscle and hat, yeah. you know, and I just didn't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't comprehend that, that like my body went through that much and like, how could it just show up again? Like no big deal. But here I was forcing myself to go to red carpet events a few months after having Amelia. And I was, you know, crying in the car before walking the carpet and crying after I get off. And I didn't realize how like detrimental I was being to myself because I wanted to just show up. Like you were saying, like, I just wanted to show up and here I am and no big deal. It's all good. And, you know, I'm back, but that wasn't true. I was like dying inside. And I'm like here, you know, in this beautiful outfit, trying to pretend for myself in the world that like, it's all good, but it wasn't. (laughs) Yeah. That's what social media I think can be dangerous about is like you mentioned people, especially that bounce back after kids. They have these professional photographers. I don't want to mention names, Hilaria Baldwin, but there's some people on social media (laughs) that uh, (laughs) that are- I know like when Christy Hemme had the babe when she had Charlie the first time and I'm like, she's like completely (laughs) back to like photo shoot ready like a week later. I was like, what is happening here? I'm like high-waisted pants all the way up to my underneath my- uh, nursing bra you know right? you're like wearing your full blown big underwear for like months because you can't move yeah exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of like social media dangers and stuff with that so as Ali said and as, as we're trying to reiterate if somebody is not you know your cup of tea on social media or you continuously feel bad or less about yourself unfollow people like that just please please, just please. Like, and, like myself included I tell anyone I'm like just hit the unfollow button like I, I'm not going to be upset about it like I would actually be much happier that you chose to take your power back and say you don't make me feel good anymore so I'm not gonna follow and just because you unfollow like I've unfollowed people and then they posted something at resonate I'm like oh I'm gonna follow them again oh but yeah 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 not a big deal like it people no, make right. it this whole huge thing and it's like no the social media created super that. offended though because they're coming from an ego space about it because they feel like you've unfollowed right. yes. their social media presence that you personally unfollowed them for life and it's like no and when really? you're no, not even close, of it, it was, that's a little bit unhealthy. I feel like it's like you have the, yeah, this, that's super you unhealthy. And follow me. It's a bit crazy. I do want to shift gears quickly to the fashion portion of things because I, as a celebrity yes, stylist, please. I have to tell <laughs> I you. Did, I, I did, did want to say that, uh, but I did want to inter- um, like interject on that though because I'm about to turn fifty um, this with this coming Wednesday, and I'm going through my menopause. So I'm going through pre-menopause right now. So, like. These girls are much younger than I am, but I never would have wished any of this on on any of my worst enemies and like sweating and just being 
irate and just being super sensitive. I think also that also helped me not being on social media so much because I was like, Oh, good for yes. you. I, I also have stuff to deal with. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm sweating. I can't sleep or I can <laughs> sleep too much. That whole right. thing. These girls have been my freaking therapist. I'm telling oh, you. I they, love it. That's amazing. But good for you for knowing that. And like, you know, just want to say like, owning that space and knowing like, Hey, I can't do this. And I got to focus on these things because this is what's actually going on with me. You know, like doing that yeah. work, I think is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Well, shifting gears quickly. So now to fashion. <laughs> I, I, I had to get to it in my little notes here. Well, yeah, well, do it. <laughs> well, plus I was just going to set this up. Val is also a fashion blogger and it is her life She's obsessed. She's I been saw so that. I saw, I saw the this. fashion blog. I love it. I saw. Yeah, it. she is <laughs> obsessed. She's stuck up. Yeah. So I'm you couldn't so wait. Excited because I, of course, did some light stalking of you, Allie, and I noticed <laughs> that your celebrity stylist business has gone into the realm, the sacred realm of Real Housewives. I saw the cross <laughs> on your page. I could die. These girls don't watch Housewives or Drag, Drag Race and like that's what I live on. So you have to tell me that, spill the tea on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're so funny well first off like I totally get it I'm, I'm admiring your closet because I'm like ooh, look at him see some fabulous shoes I mean uh, first off I love the bejeweled headband like I'm Thank living you. for that man it's funny I almost put my bejeweled headband on today we've been twins but I was like oh maybe that'll be too much but no I, I love it like I love what you're wearing it's never too much right I always tell everyone more, more is more like whoever said less is more, I disagree. More is more. <laughs> I, I I love it. I love the bejeweled. But yeah, no, Lisa Vanderpump was definitely a favorite to style out of all the housewives. So I walk into Lisa Vanderpump's closet and I'm like, oh my God, I could die in here. Like I actually was quoted saying that. I don't know with paychecks or something, but I literally said like, I, I could die in here and be happy. Like not just die in here, but be happy. Like the fashion, the levels of the colors and the texture and the designers and alphabetized and the way it was. I I mean, I actually said to her when I walked in her closet, I'm like, what am I doing here? And she, <laughs> and she, she laughed said, and she goes, what do you mean? I said, you've got all this here. Like you've got all the fashions, like everything. She's like, you know, but she's so, she's amazing. But she was like, oh, darling, you know, I just need to be put together. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was like, yeah. you know, like so simple, no big deal, you know? And, you know, and I started going through and putting some things together for her. And it was funny because I think she's one of my favorite clients, not just because she's so, like so fabulous and everything in her closet was amazing, but she was so like, at first when I gave her jumpsuits to try, you know, she's the woman who lives in the A-line dress. And and, you know, she's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I'm not young enough. I'm not sexy. Enough. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, you're sexy as hell. You're beautiful. Like, you're a boss babe. Like, of course you can wear it. And that's one of my favorite parts of styling, no matter who I style. It's like, I tell people all the time, I transform them from the inside out. You know, confidence is your best accessory. It's like, if I can't do that for you, in my opinion, then I'm not doing my job when it comes to styling. Anybody can pick clothing and say, this is fabulous, put it on, or this looks like the magazine. Like, that's great. Any, in my opinion, most people can do that. But when you can actually transform someone and you can actually give them that confidence to wear that outfit and rock it and feel good in it that's what changes the game and with Lisa like when I got her to wear this like gorgeous plunging black jumpsuit with like lace cut out and the whole thing and she was so nervous and she wore it to a gal and she was like I don't know and I'm darling you know and I was like Lisa I promise trust me trust me and she was like you know really like I don't know I think I'm gonna go get home and get changed and she wore it and she walked the red carpet and she got best dressed everywhere oh like everywhere it was such a moment in my career housewives of all time for you to get her to take any sort of risk is like shocking right but it my was favorite like, housewife. for her She's too yes yeah. i love her she's amazing like i'm not just saying that because i've worked with her like she is truly yeah. like the most humble sweet hardworking. like that woman is Amazing. A hustler, like, hustler. Well, yeah. I'm like just a, a, a grown ass woman, but it's amazing to me. What I find, I think the most, like the best thing about that whole story is even Confidence. she, a grown ass woman, super successful, super empowering and empowered yeah. at all these levels, second yeah. guessed herself just a second where you would have right. in, insecure it. like You're us, like insecure. Yeah. Like, like all of us, like we all have it, yeah. right? It's our ego, it's this, it's that, we all have it. And what was amazing to see with her too was that not only did she get best dressed, but then she started wearing jumpsuits. And I was like, oh my God, like even when we stopped working together, like, you know, just life changes and she started doing her own thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're still wearing jumpsuits. Like I, I help be a part of that. Like you right. found 
a new style. And when I see clients of mine, like I'm no longer styling, but they're like living their best life and they're wearing certain things that like I help implement with them and they're changing their style and they're changing the way they look at themselves. That's like the best thing for me ever because fashion is supposed to be, in my opinion, you know, that art telling. It's supposed to be that, you know, confidence, that wow moment. It's like when you put it on, you know, you feel fabulous and you feel good no matter what it is, you know, and it's like that's what fashion is supposed to do for you. And I think when people look at fashion as something that's, you know, debilitating or something that consumes them, it's like, no, then you're let, you're giving it too much power. You need to put those clothes on and rock them and stand in them because you're wearing them. You know, I used to tell certain clients of mine, I would dress them for a red carpet. And because of the confidence they had, I could put a paper bag on them and high heels and they look fabulous. You know, it was like, it doesn't matter. It's like, if you're feeling it, you feel good in it. You have the confidence, you can rock anything. I've put celebrities in, you know, Target dresses and, and Yvonne C high heels. And they'll be like, oh my God, what is she wearing? She looks amazing. And it's like, they have no idea because they're rocking it, you know? So anyway, listen it's like don't let your clothes own you like you own your clothes you be a part of that transformation can i just say like every every celebrity out there needs to hire you because (laughs) you also are a therapist like building (laughs) on our, our our confidence level because a lot of us like are not used to being so you know i'm not fashion forward you know, I'm, 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 I'm not the fashion. I'm the tomboy of the crew and that kind of thing. And I'm not really comfortable. Wow, this is so, so cute. I love the I cutoff. Know, I love the cutoff. Cutoff. She wears an adorable, like, I know. Tar- Target. As you speak of Target, this is Target. I love, I love my Target. This is Target too. I love it. Oh, <laughs> you know what we didn't do? We didn't do who are you wearing? What are you drinking? Oh, I wonder if it's too late for that. But actually, we're, we're going to do that in just a moment. But before we get to that, since Ali did a fantastic segue, naturally, by the way, go girl. Yeah. We can actually check in with our resident Ashenista, not fashionista, ladies and gentlemen, our resident Ashenista, who has some fabulous tips on uh, fashion for us. And weirdly enough, it's actually Ash Wednesday today. So how fitting that he would be here to oh, give tips Look at that timing. He's here to share his expertise. Check this out. Happy Ash Wednesday, everybody. It's me, Ash, AKA Ashenista, Gore TV's resident fashionista. Here to give you gams, yes, you grown ass men, some insight into what are the key things happening in fashion for spring, summer 2021. I'm going to give you guys a rundown of some of the key items to keep you looking fresh this spring, summer um, season. Uh, We are transitioning into a new season. We're coming out for winter. We're transitioning into spring, summer. So it's time to give you our wardrobes a bit of an update. I'm going to give you a couple of key things to look out for and hopefully give you a wardrobe that fresher look for this spring, summer season. So let's get into it. Um, I want to talk about the colour story for the season, first of all, which happens to be neon. Now, let's be honest. Neon is not one of the easiest colors to pull off. It's not one of the easiest trends to pull off. Um, We've seen a lot of neon on the runways from Dior uh, right down to Versace as well. A lot of top to toe neon. Now, if you're not feeling daring, what you can do is maybe invest in the odd neon piece. Um, So what works is that you can do separate. So for example, you can get like a neon colored t-shirt and pair it up with a darker jean to get, you know, that neon gives that much needed pop of color. Um, so definitely look at investing in like one-off simple pieces. Neon is pretty much accessible on most high streets now. So if you're living in the US, um, you know, places like JCPenney or maybe Express, for example, may do a line around in neon. For those living in Europe and the UK, places like Topshop, which is now part of ASOS, Boohoo, you know, loads of online retailers have different sort of shades of neon available. If you're not feeling daring and you don't want to do neon in terms of apparel, you could invest in some neon accessories. So things like neon shoes, bags, belts, whatever the trend, you know, whatever you fancy really. Uh, And that's a way that you can incorporate neon into your wardrobe. And again, these are really accessible on the high street as well. And utility wear now, what we're calling the new utility. Uh, Again, this has been doing the rounds for several seasons in both spring, summer, and also for winter. It's back again in spring, summer 2021. And 
The key difference is, is again, it's much more updated, much like the bomber jacket. It's a lot more fully functional. Uh, it works really, really well in terms of like cargo trousers, you know, utility shirts, it works really well, utility vests and jackets also. So utility is going to be a massive thing for this spring summer season. And again, easily accessible on high street. Again, think Old Navy, think Gap, think Zara. Um, there's a, a couple of examples for you as well. Thank you for joining me on my very special day, Ash Wednesday, who would have thought it? Uh, it's been a pleasure spending a couple of minutes with you. Do like and subscribe to Gore TV. And don't forget every Sunday, the gorgeous Valerie and I host Sunday Splash, hashtag Sunday Splash, on Instagram Live on Val's channel. Um, so if you are following Val, make sure you tune into Sunday Splash with my very good self and the gorgeous old girl Val. Make sure you follow the ladies on social media. Make sure you're following and liking Gore TV. Follow me on social media as well. It's at Ashenista. Thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes with me. Now it's back to the ladies. Have a lovely Wednesday. Yay! Ashenista celebrating style and all things fashion on Ash Wednesday. And as we should mention, uh, our show, hashtag Sunday Splash with myself, it's Sunday Splash with Val and Ash. What's cuter than that? It's a Prosecco-driven interactive fashion discussion that Ash and I host on Instagram every Sunday at 8 p.m. in the UK. It's 3 p.m. Uh, for those in the Eastern time zone. So check it out on our Instagram. He is a fantastic fashion fashionista, Ashenista, and Ali. You guys would get along like a house on fire. Oh, my God. You have to reach out to him. Oh, you guys will hit it off. So I'm gonna have to go on my show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> made a good oh point. my gosh! Oh my god! We'll do something like some kind of crossover. I can see it. It'll be it'll be stylish and fabulous. But Mickey made a good point. We have not done our favorite part of the show, which is who are you wearing and what are you drinking? Uh, Mickey, let's go to you first since you were the one to remind us. That's our favorite. Part. Oh yeah, well, because everybody we're going into what we're going like. Ooh, even though I'm the most underdressed for the occasion <laughs> right now, you're gonna um, go work out later. I'm though. drinking a bit later. of coffee because I needed a pep. Um, because I was gonna go work out. Oh, maybe oh our rescue mug! I love it. I have the same mug. The giveaway. Yes, the and then mug. I'm wearing this tank top from um another round bar and grill, which is the bar and grill that we shot our mute my music video for I don't give a my really? friend Aaron who's been my best friend since like high school it, oh, she sure. works there so we got to have the whole bar to shoot this thing because we were going to have a fight scene where I beat up some Ooh. of the guys right? she's still there she's still there um she does I think she stops in and works there but you know yeah. she's like full time she's got you know she's a mom she's one of her girls my goddaughter who's my goddaughter I was there for her uh -huh. birth I mean she's in college now but we've been best friends. We were in anatomy class together in high school. That's how long I love this girl. She is the oh, best one of my dearest friends. But, and then I'm wearing my socks. Is there a hair coming off of it? <laughs> we asked I'm her, like, sure. these are She goes, I changed my socks. I changed my socks. These are Medusa's socks. Medusa sent me these socks and they say fuel. They say Ooh. fuel. Oh, what does it say on the bottom? What does it say on the you bottom? It says Medusa. something on the bottom. Oh God. Show us your feet. On the show. Good thing. I feel like. <laughs> Eat her. Eat her. She's a legend. She's right. a legendary wrestler. Like we yeah, all look up. Yeah. A oh, right. but yeah, these are her <laughs> socks. So I wanted to get these in there. I love that. Lisa, let's go to you next. Who are you wearing? What are you drinking? Well, first of all, I'm drinking, of course, my fresh fresh vine wine, who's one of our sponsors, right? And um, it's low, low carb, low. I didn't know the only reason why I drank it because I like it not because I knew it was low carb, keto friendly and all that stuff. I found that out later, which is a blessing, but I am wearing my Tarjay um, top and um, just a little, uh, just my Lululemons on the bottom because I didn't think I was going to be standing up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> meeting. It's fine. And then my feet were cold. So I put a little socks. But you're can, long but, um, Lizzie's warm. Yep. Yes. And I was trying to do my hair um, for you, Allie, because I was like going, oh, no, a fashion girl. Oh, no. But I haven't washed my hair since I got back from the rumble. And I'm like, OK, by the time this airs, I wash my hair, you guys. <laughs> Double shooting. Out. But well, I just I couldn't do anything. You I look couldn't fabulous. Do with it. Oh, I love why you. Not, but why not top knot? That's what I always say. Allie, you look gorgeous and be cheap oh, and so me. tan. Tell us oh, who you're tan. what are you drinking tonight? Do you have a libation or a little tea or what are you drinking? Oh, so I was like, well, I, I left my drink out there. I was, drink, I was drinking tea, um, one of my suja teas that I love, a uh, passion fruit. 
Ooh. And uh, what I'm wearing is a terge, a little off the shoulder number, a little floral. Wow. Floral is really big right now. I love a good floral and it's like a nice off shoulder. It's actually a bodysuit. And then I've got like it tucked into a uh, little uh, jeans, you know, I like, that's like one of my favorite, like go-tos, like a little more simple, but still dressed up. And then mm -hmm. I'm always about jewelry. So like, that's what I like, I even if I'm in a t-shirt and, and not like nothing, it's like jewelry's on. So yeah. I've got, if you guys can see. Yeah, because it's so sports. Are you, are you into crystals too? Oh, we were talking so about into crystal. Yes, um, this okay. is Love 13. She's a girlfriend of mine in San Diego. She's amazing. And it's all like, these wait, wait, where, where is she at? In San Diego? San Diego. I live there. You do? I do. And I'm into crystals. Like, you oh know, my God, like I'll, I have have to, like I'll have to show you because I'm obsessed. And this necklace, if you can see here, this is also hers. Oh, and cool. uh, it's called Love 13. It's amazing. And the whole line is like every crystal is like, you know, love, energy, protection. Like she's got everything and she, you know, gives the best intention when she creates it. She's amazing. She's a mother as well, a dear oh, friend. I've been so many celebrities in her jewelry for years. Every time I wear it, I just like feel good. And like, I don't, my husband has two bracelets from her. My girls wear her bracelets. Like the whole family oh, is like in crystal. Her, that's her stuff. I would love to, yeah, I would love yes, to. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll send you yeah, guys the yeah, info for too. Yeah. 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 We'll and then in the description of the video for sure, because I, I want to get more into crystals. Like, like Lisa said, we had an energy healer on and we want to get crystals. Like Lisa there, she has her. They're so great. They're so great. I Honestly, so I have this, my little I have this crystal by me for rose quartz for love. Like love. I, I keep them all around me because I just think they're so grounding. Like it's, you know, it's energy and like ener energy is, you know, it's a real thing. People don't realize like how healing, you know, the energy can be that you allow around yourself. It also can be not the best thing. So you like really have to be aware of your space and you know, like what you have by it. So I'm always like, I, I could talk about crystals all day long. I, I, I love, love crystals. I got it. Said about crystals. Yes, yeah, we, oh we do. We do. We really do. Maybe we should have your friend on there, on here. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was, yeah, that'd be fun. I'm looking at Mickey's dog Pixie, who's like just doing a little roly poly action in the back. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's also into the crystals. We <laughs> can't know. This well, used to be a pig. I have to mention that okay. Allie, you uh, lovingly responded to my head. Oh my god! Wait a minute. What is that? It what used to be a pig, and with a squeaky in the middle. Oh, that's my son. Oh, wow. oh, there he is. Baby D, baby D. Baby D. Are you going to say hello? Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> this used to be a pig and it had a full squeaker in the middle. Oh, and my this God. Was all that's left. That's of all that's left. Red mouse. <laughs> Daddy. Absolutely. Daddy. Daddy. Going out of here. Daddy. Get out of here. <laughs> her, her husband's a bit of a redneck. He's like, get out of here. Get out of here right now. <laughs> She's married to Roy D. Mercer. Nobody told her that's until now. I love, oh, I love the realness. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, Wait, guys. I have to tell you guys, I also have a script my we manifesting don't. spray. Like, I'm telling you, I'll get you guys all into this stuff. What is that? What is that? What is that? A manifesting spray. It's like an intentional spray. I sprayed it before we got on, like just to like put the intention of like bringing all the goodness. I have my essential oil mantra spray. I'm, I'm about all this. My oil blend. I'm, I'm telling too. you, I, I'm into all your blends. Oil. Are these your blends, or are they from a company that's local? This or is, uh, this is a uh, Young Living, which is like okay. everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. My girlfriend made for me like a little blend of it's an uplifting blend mantra. So I like put it on, you know, just to give me a little judge and like center, you know, energy. And then this is, this is a local California company called Simply, Simply Blue. Um, and this one's a manifesting and it's just like fused with different oils, but I spray uh -huh. it and it smells so good. It's got like, you know, uh, witch hazel and um, essential oils and like moon charged distilled crystals. And oh, I just I love that. I love it. Yeah, it's really pretty too. It's I follow really so much of that stuff on Instagram or like the Improvision Goddess and all these things with just yes. like crystals. And look, here she comes back with her uh, bowl. But I just, <laughs> I follow a lot of it and the different herbs. Do you have one like of these? We're good. Oh, yes. A sound bowl. I need, that's next on my list. I need to get one of those. I got that I from LA. That. LA on really? Third Street, Third Street Prom Promenade. That one's pretty. I like that, that one. pretty one. It was really we're very woke. Well guys, it, it was really expensive, but anything for positive energy. <laughs> what are you energy? wearing? What are you, with your little yeah, headband? Bell, bell, so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Allie was so nice to mention my headband. I have to say, you know, a, a lot of these headbands that I, I won't even turn the camera around and show you how many headbands it's, it's, 
it's quite disturbing. Oh no, are you serious? Quite disturbing. But this one is actually like it's under 20 pounds. It's, it's a company here. It's actually a spa and salon called Forever Gorgeous. I've Ooh. talked about them before with magnetic lashes. They're amazing. If you're in the UK, especially, you won't believe the craftsman craftsmanship of these headbands. They're so intricate and so fabulous. I love it. I can see it. Down. I can see all the details. Yeah, I can see how it's all woven it's in. All the, I've, been, I've been staring at it. I'm like, wow, it's 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 I'll gorgeous. Send you a link. Like a yeah, I'll put it actually in the description too. But it, you know, I, I love headbands, but some of them are actually like handmade and really, really like it's like a, a headpiece more so than it's, a headband. It's an art. It's an art. Yeah. It's a part of the fashion. And, and yeah. it's totally I, I feel like very part of your like, look. Um, I, I love because you know we, we film from here up so I always try to sort of feature items that are kind of like from the waist up um boobs up really let's be honest uh, <laughs> yeah, a, a little faux fur number save the animals faux fur from new look here in the UK and I have to say um I'm drinking some Prosecco tonight and it's in my my girlfriend Erin my best friend in Orlando Florida where I'm mostly from born in Texas mostly from Orlando Florida she went to Vegas and bought me the most fabulous I could cry I'm the biggest RuPaul fan in the world. It's a RuPaul. Ooh, and on the on the back, it says, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was so thrilled that she sent me this because I knew I was like, oh my God, I can I can feature it on God TV. It matches the pillow. So cheers to my say, so, Your headband matches the, the chair. Your yeah. outfit, I mean, like the whole decor. I'm like, it's it's fabulous. The whole Thank setup. You. <laughs> should we be best. some best friends? I think we did. Yeah, yes, totally. Yes. Totally. 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 I want to ask if you want to, like, we're going to put everything in the description. I, I hate to end the show, but we, we have to for time's sake. But where can we find you? And what are your final words to your new fans here on Gaw TV? Oh my gosh. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. This was like so much fun. I felt like I was literally hanging out with my girlfriends. It's like the best, meet, the best <laughs> time ever. We didn't feel like work at all. <laughs> I love it. That's like my favorite types of relationships, honestly. Um, and uh, you can just, of course, follow me, like you said, at Allie Bean Design on all of my social. I love to connect with my community. So please, if anything resonated with you or you just want to say hello and tell me you found me from Gaw, please, you know, reach out and say hi. Uh, my website and blog is allylean.com. It's actually being re branded right now so I have lots of exciting new content coming soon Yay. Uh, fashion and mom life and all kinds of things on uh, my podcast everything with Allie Levine Mickey was just on now I'm gonna have to have Valerie and Lisa on as well oh, oh I had so much fun it was so easy it was oh. the same it was just I just felt like I was just talking to my friend you know what I mean yeah, yeah I love fun. them it's such a real and raw combo. It's so amazing. So if you guys are into podcasts, I really work really hard. I do everything on that show to share that, you know, realness and rawness vulnerability. And I just would just leave everyone off with something that I've learned over the years and from my career to becoming a mom is, you know, authenticity is your superpower. You know, being you, being who you are, you know, confidence is your best accessory. And then being authentic in who you are, that just takes you to a whole nother level. You know, it just opens up all those doors. You wonder maybe sometimes why something's not happening for you. Remember things that didn't align for you for a reason and it's actually a blessing and I've had to learn that too and that you know the things that are supposed to will align for you no matter what they will be there in front of you so don't ever second guess you know what you're doing you're always working towards something and as long as like we said from the beginning of the show you know you're of service you're helping others you're sharing and you're being authentically you it's all that matters and that, that that's honestly my big my biggest message I love that. And I'm sure you guys are leaving as inspired as we are. So make sure that you follow Allie. All of her information is going to be in the description. Make sure that you subscribe, please. We're raising a glass to Allie Levine, our new friend. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I feel like, I think, I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, I you guys are amazing. Honestly, this like, is so You're like fun. a high school friend or something or a junior <laughs> high school friend. I you always know? say amazing people find amazing people, you That's know? Right. Yeah. here we are. <laughs> there we are. There Thanks we are. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yep. Bye. This is the word to go, yo, yo.